Okay, so I totally was gonna film at like 9 and then I got bit by the organizing bug and I suddenly got all these ideas of how to reorganize my makeup again and it is now 11.30. But I really, really need to film because I'm gonna be out of town for two weeks so I need to pre-film. And instead of doing a full face of makeup on camera, I've already put on pretty much everything complexion-wise and I'm just going to be doing yet another eye-focused only video. I'm going to give each Pat McGrath quint its own video so that way if you guys are only interested in one, you can just jump through them. I'm going to just bite-size these and let's... And honestly, I just, I'm kind of interested. How are they going to perform? Like, I've just been feeling like doing... I don't know. It's just whatever I feel like doing. My, my channel has no rhyme, reason, or structure and I... Like, that's fine. So I want to dive back into some color. So the first quint I'm going to start off with is going to be the R2-D2 one, which is is called the Divine Droid Eyeshadow Palette. I thought that was what it was. I haven't even opened these yet, and of course, I will be saving these boxes and putting them on display. So this is what it looks like. Now, every single thing in this collection is just Stickerville. Some of these are still in stock, some of these are not, but make of this what you will. I know this video is so late. I should have totally worked on this a long time ago, but like as I've made clear in my content, I have been kind of busy. So here we are. So I'm gonna use this one first. This is really pretty. Now I am gonna use this whole quint, and if I do need to bring in mattes, I will bring in mattes from elsewhere. And this will probably come as a surprise to absolutely nobody, but I still have not washed all my brushes yet, but that is something that I need to do this week. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start off with the darkest shade and I'm going to work from there. And in order to do that, I'm going to use the synthetic and flat end of the of an Urban Decay Naked dual ended brush. And I'm just going to start with that. It picks up really, really well on a brush. I'm just going to use the little mirror here. I zoomed you guys in just a smidgen. Hopefully I don't go off frame and I'm just going to Ooh, so this pretty much went on really smoothly. There is a very dark base to this shade, so I think as I blend it out, I am going to start seeing some base come through. I'm not really the greatest at working with shades with dark bases like these. I always get kind of intimidated. Yeah, this shade is not going to be a shade you can blend terribly easily because otherwise the base is going to start kind of rearing its head. But it is really cool, so I'm going to think of what I'm going to get. I, I'm talking faster than I'm thinking. I What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a fat wing like this and I will use the other shades in this quint to kind of quote unquote blend out the shade. So with my eyes closed, it's like a black hole and then my eyes open and you can see the tiny strip of eyeliner. Gotta love having monolids. Yeah, this shade almost feels like it has kind of some slip to it. So it packs on really nicely, but it's not blending out super well. And I've mentioned this before in my Odin's Eye Christmas Eve palette when I was working with the dark blue with the shimmer flecks in it, how that shade is so unforgiving to blend out and you're gonna run into a similar situation with this. And as I said in that video, I've never seen a shadow in this formula that was easy to work with. It just seems to be the nature of a shadow like this when it's so dark with such a dark base and it's metallic. Your ability to blend it out before the mistakes show up, there's just no room for error. So I do appreciate her opting to make this formula have more slip to it because it means I'm getting virtually no fallout while at the same time it is packing on well with a synthetic dense brush. But I can totally see people trying to blend this out and being like, whoa, it looks patchy because it is because I've just never seen a shade in this formula that can blend out without going patchy. So what you want to do to blend it out is you're going to have to use other shades. But, and it's not, obviously it's not perfect. You can kind of see where I tried to blend it out, but I realized very quickly that wasn't going to happen. So there's some oopsies over on my eyelids, but that's okay. Now I just want to see if I can just make sure it's the purple is really visible. Okay, so as you can see, this is what it's looking like right now. Aside from that one little fleck that I did there when I bumped my lower eyelid, I have seen no fallout. Especially this eye, the lower lash line is completely clean. That is super rare for a shade like this. Very clean application. So this is kind of the compromise I think she was going for where she was like, the application needs to be clean. And this was noted in Temptalia's review as well. So, but I personally really like how clean it is because especially as somebody who does 
the face before the eyes and refuses to change her ways because she's a clown. I do really like how I can put this shade on and get no fallout from it. So that is definitely super appreciated. Now I'm gonna go and start working with the other shades. So I'm gonna switch to another <laughs> Urban Decay Naked brush. I have quite a few of these. And I am actually gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start using this shade here. This shade definitely is a little bit more loosely pressed. And I'm gonna start using this shade to blend out the purple. So I don't want to cover up the purple completely, but I do want to start using this shade to build up depth and kind of the almost like quote unquote the outer V of my eyelid. I do have some bumps on my eyelids still, mostly probably from stress because I went to Atlanta and back in 24 hours. So if you see that circle right there, that is not eyeshadow patching, that is a bump. And I'm just going to use light stippling motions to kind of blend it out a little bit. And this is kind of, see the situation back here where I'm not able to get a clean blend because of the cast and the base of this shim shimmer and the flex. This is where a matte is gonna really come in handy. I will go in with at the end and that should smooth all of this out. But as you can see, I'm definitely able to add the depth that I want make a gradation between the purple and the shade. I'm also going to go ahead and use this on the lower lash line. And I'm very carefully stamping it to avoid further fallout because this one is more loosely pressed. Really, really pretty in the lower lash line. And now I'm going to go back into that purple and really deepen up the wing. I want the wing to really show. And as I'm building up the shadow on my eyelid, I don't feel any heaviness, I don't feel thickness. And I'm just really just following my orbital socket as I work on this. And then as I turn my head, you can see I'm adding that depth. And all of this again, I will blend out with a matte shadow later. Yeah, so right now it's looking a little rough, but this is definitely a huge kind of trust the process kind of look. And even I'm kind of having to reassure myself because like I'm like mildly panicking that maybe my idea won't work, but it'll be okay guys. So next I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start using the blue and the yellow to build up. And now this yellow is really unique. I saw the swatches on Temptalia's site and it's kind of almost like a limey green, which is super, super cool. So I'm going to start off with this. So I'm just going to start putting this up here. This is a really unique shade. Wow, I don't actually think I have a shade like this in my entire collection. It's not lime green. It's not gold. It really just sits right between the two. And it's not looking chalky or crumbly. And I'm just going to really let this shade go up towards my nose bridge. And it has no cast, so it won't look too strange. That is so much fun. And now I'm going to again change brushes. I'm going to start using the blue. And I, this blank space I've created for myself is where I'm going to tuck that blue in. Okay, so be careful with the blue. I, I did this with the brush. I dragged my brush in way too rough and I totally accidentally pulled up way too much pigment. So this definitely has no problem picking up on a brush. Okay, I don't like the brush I'm using right now, just FYI. I hate using these kinds of brushes to pack on shimmers because they're so stiff. I feel like I don't have control, but this is what I get when I don't wash my brushes. <laughs> it's almost like actions have consequences, you guys. So I'm just gonna have to work with it. And as you can see, I'm sandwiching that blue. I'm gonna keep taking that blue further in. If you hear huffy puffy noises, Jackson and Gates are wrestling behind the camera. Ooh, that is so pretty. This is so much better than the blue in Celestial Nirvana. So that's what it's looking like now. I do really like this. I think it's really cute. I am gonna go ahead and go back into the lemony limey shade with my finger and see if... Hold on, this feels horribly imprecise. No, that didn't work. I'm gonna just go back to using the brush I was using earlier. Oh, I need to get my app together. I'm just gonna make sure that the lime is still visible. It kind of overtook it with the blue. But yeah, I am loving how this is turning out so far. And so now I've conveniently left behind this little blank space on the middle of both my eyelids. I'm gonna go ahead and use this shade right there. So far, all of these shades have picked up so easily with whatever brushes I have used which is always great to see. And I did use the Rare Beauty eyeshadow primer, which is just kind of my go-to primer for everything. I'm sure something tackier would work even better, but I just like the Rare Beauty one. It's not drying. And I am kind of applying this a little heavily and it's not super blended in with the blue, but I'll fix that in a second. So I kind of have like a patchwork quilt on my eyes. But yeah, I do really like how this is turning out so far. As of right now, the blue and the pink are totally not blended. So I'm going to go back into my blue brush and I'm going to go back into the blue and I'm going to see if I can get that blend back. 
without it turning into mud. The blend is slightly better, so I am going to go ahead and use a finger now and just see if I can't kind of try and get these shades to look better together. Okay, yeah, it looks a little bit better with the finger, so I'm just going to use my finger on my other hand now and do the same thing. I think the warmth of my finger really helps to kind of get the shadow to melt into one another the way I want it to. Okay, so now this is what my eye look is looking like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take that kind of raspberry cranberry is shade. I'm going to take that on the lower lash line and I'm just going to kind of match the upper eyelid. There's so much going on on the upper eyelid. I don't want the lower lash line to be too loud. So I'm just going to keep this shade really tight and I'm not going to build it up too much. So that lower lash line today is totally getting like not smoked out at all. And now I'm going to go in with a very tiny brush and I'm going to use that blue on the lower lash line just because it's kind of, it's the closest to my inner corner. So I'm just going to use it so that there's color continuity. And then I am going to, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I was going to touch up the purple, but it's still very much visible. I do really appreciate that. And I'm going to get out a matte eyeshadow. So for that, I recently got my Beauty Box Korea order in. Among the several things that I ordered, I ordered one, I ordered the gray cat from Holika Holika. I've wanted this on and off for like two or three years now. It is just a really simple, easy kind of contour shade. I could use this to contour my face. Like I don't, I, I could, and then I pan it really fast but like i could hold on Mo mochi says hi she wanted to be on the camera yes she, and you said you wanted to be on camera you want to say hi to everybody mm, yeah oh no you don't want to say hi to everybody okay so i'm gonna use this to blend out the edges here and also kind of just it almost like kind of contours my eye as well and i'm just gonna use very light tapping motions so that the eyeshadow goes exactly where i want it I'm kind of trying to keep the upturned appearance that the winged eyeshadow gave me. I want to really lean into that. So I'm not going to just slap this eyeshadow everywhere. I'm going to angle it up as well. And I'm not going to go below the wing I created. I want to keep it clean. And I'm going really slow so that I don't over go overboard. I, I want it, I'm like trying to be very precise right now. So like that. And so you can see it kind of make, does make a bit of a difference now. And then um, I do think I need just a tiny bit of a slightly deeper eyeshadow. For the darker matte, I'm gonna use cork, which I have like a sticky note where I wrote down it's a MAC shadow. And I'm just going to dip into this very lightly. It's like super, super slight, but I think I did. I think it does make a difference. And then I'm just gonna also take a little bit down here. Yeah, sometimes you just need a bunch of mattes to create the perfect gradient that you want. Okay, so this is going to be what my finished look looks like. A little bit unconventional, kind of strange, but definitely kind of like not really surprising if you watch my channel often enough. I do really like how it turned out. All the colors kind of got a place on my eyelid. Everything ended up fitting in, which... I honestly was not expecting to be able to fit them all on, but we did it. So all that's left is going to be lashes. I'm going to do the rest of my makeup. I'll be back to discuss what's on my face, be back to discuss this palette. So I'll be back in a few seconds. Okay, so I tried to do a side ponytail, but honestly, I don't know. I feel like I have, I used to have like so much hair and I feel like I don't have much either that or my hair is just greasy and so it's sticking to itself. I don't really like it. I'm taking it down. Let me try it again. Hold on. But also like I know next to nothing about hairstyling. So I'm just, if I seem kind of cringe when I'm trying to do my hair, I probably am. So like, just, just don't say anything. Maybe just like try like just two. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. I just don't feel like having my hair down today. This is what my finished face looks like. I just kind of decided to go glowy eyes, glowy complexion, glowy lips, the whole nine yards. And I think it turned out pretty nice. There is some texture on my face showing through, but that's just what happens when you have a nice glowy complexion. And I did use the Fido Surgeons Blush and Simmer. It's just a really nice pink, a little bit on the warm side. I kind of wanted to like lean into the raspberry shade on the center of my eyelids. I don't know how well I did because this ended up pulling very warm, but it's fine. This shade kind of goes with like just about everything. So it's very forgiving at least. And then the back of my highlighter during the Natasha Denona Black Friday sale, one of the things I got was finally after literally over a year of wanting it, 
was I I did notice that this was on still on for sale on her website the I need a nude highlighter it is out of stock basically everywhere else because it's technically limited edition so and it is unfortunately like so dark on me um, I used it kind of towards the back and as I turn to the front you can kind of see the cast on the side of my face you can almost board like right here especially see this right here that color right here is highlight cast it was so much darker than i was expecting i definitely didn't think i could use this on my nose because she marketed it as a universal highlighter but this is definitely a cast that is almost too much for me to do so unless i have some pretty heavy blush on this is unfortunately going to be a highlighter i can only use very situationally like i'm like so sad right now i'm happy i have it but i am sad i couldn't use it to the extent that i thought i would because like see that's cast so then for the front of my cheeks and for my nose, I just used my tried and true, my revelation, starting to slowly wear off the text in the center because it takes forever to use highlighter. And then for my lips, I used the YSL uh, water stain in the shade 613. These are discontinued, which was such a mistake. I don't know why they're discontinued. Maybe they, maybe YSL will like release another version of this. I don't know, but... This is the shade. It's it's a little darker than I was expecting, but it does match with the raspberry tone, kind of. I mean, it's not like a terrible choice of lip color. I could have done better, but I could have done way worse. So that's going to be this face of makeup. Overall, I did have a really fun experience with this palette, but I will say my cats are being silly. For people who are like beginners or like who are kind of not super great at working with shadow formulas, you may find this shade to be kind of difficult to work with. So this is going to be a shade for either a finger or for a nice packing brush and don't try and blend it just pack it and if you do need to blend it use a different shimmer to blend it with so like you're gonna need to use other shades to create a blended look with this this is not a shade you can create a gradient with on your own unless you are like a pro at using eyeshadow in which case my hat is off to you teach me your ways obviously i can't conduct a wear test on this because it is already past midnight but um I'm just kind of looking at how it's acting with my eye wrinkles because I swear my eye wrinkles have been getting worse and worse lately. I'm trying to see if it's settling into my wrinkles and it is... So far, it's doing fine. I don't see any creasing. It's definitely emphasizing my wrinkles if I look really close, like obviously because it's a metallic, but I don't see any settling into any wrinkles. You are welcome to tell me if you see anything. So as somebody who has dry eyelids, I can't really say my wear test would be reliable anyways. Traditionally speaking, I very, very rarely have issues with eyeshadows fading on me. It has to be a bad eyeshadow for it to fade on me. I personally really enjoyed this quint. I definitely, this is definitely like a companion palette for sure. Like this is not really something you're supposed to create a single look with. Um, but if you really like each individual shade in here, then I think you'll really enjoy this. I don't know if it's still in stocks. So I don't know if that's useful. And I will say I particularly really really like this shade right here it is so so unique this one is just not real i don't really like super deep base shimmers which is why i don't buy black based multi-chromes anymore this shade is kind of a little generic i'm like kind of over cranberry shadows right now so it's just a personal preference thing i had a phase where i was super into cranberry shadows and i'm just i'll get into that phase again but i've so far been off the pink train lately but yeah so i Judge for yourself how this look turned out. I was very thorough with my application and demonstration because it was an eye-focused video. I was able to really go into detail without the video becoming a movie. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I have the other two quints waiting in the wings. Those will get done next. And so then I'll have three videos, each featuring individual quints. Uh, let me know if you like that or if you would have rather seen all three quints in one video. That's fine. Just tell me whatever you want. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Stick around and goodbye.